fuck are we gonna do? Kill a federal agent. It's done. I killed him. What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4 is back on and I know you are excited just as I am. Talking about excitement, it's good to see Mecca, Lorenzo and Freaky Ziki back for a minute. I'm just hoping they don't put Ghost in any form of hallucination scene but I'm confident Ghost is in this season, trust me. In this video, I'll be talking about the actions in the first episode. I'll be focusing on the shooting scene and Agent Young's death and Tariq's biggest mistake he made without knowing when killing Junior. The danger ahead for Tariq, Efe, Drew, Norma herself, Obi, and who has the real leverage on every one of them. I also break down why Efe tipped Tariq off about Kane and others who were after him. And of course, if you are new to my channel, my name is Nino, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get straight into the actions in episode one. First thing I'm going to talk about is leverage. Now this first episode from my perspective has thrown more light on everyone's mistake and who has the ultimate power to destroy people more. Now let me start by pointing out people's mistake in this first episode. Diana, she made a mistake by not killing Monet as Drew said. It would have made things a lot more easier for them in the rest of the episodes. Obi. Now, Obi made a mistake by giving Braden a tip about Norma and the Taharas going to kill Tariq at the warehouse. He also made a mistake for making Tariq help him with his family's green card instead of waiting for Norma to do that for him at her own time. Ife. She made a terrible mistake for texting Tariq about Kane and others looking for him to kill. Not only that, but for picking Norma's side as well in the last season. Now, Tariq. Tariq also made a big mistake for talking to the feds about Junior's shooting and I'll come to that later in this video. And Norma herself has made a mistake for trusting Tariq enough to have a truce. Now, everyone seems to think they are making moves, but it's all one mistake to the other. Trust me, this season will be great and funny to watch at the same time. Now, the question I'm going to ask is who has the ultimate power to start an internal war amongst Norma and the Tahades? As we speak, Tariq has the ultimate plug to pull on everybody to destroy themselves. What do I mean and how do I mean? Now, considering everyone's mistake that I've stated early on, when it comes to the Tahades, what is the greatest fear among them? It is the fact that Monet and Kane cannot know who plan to kill Monet. Who can potentially expose them and start a family war? Tariq. So, one word from Tariq to Monet and Kane about how Diana and Drew plan to kill their mother will start a beautiful war with zero trust left for the Taharis. Now, let's cross over to Norma's camp. As for Norma, her own will be worse because she'll be left alone if Tariq pulls the plug on her. If you remember... Norma was the one who killed her child's father in Italy. Now, from the first episode, we can tell how Anya feels about both her mom and her dad and how painful her dad's death is to her. Now, if Tariq wants to cause pain to Norma, getting this information to Anya will be enough to cause mother and daughter conflict between Norma and her daughter. And I don't think her daughter will ever forgive her mother. She has her father's trust fund waiting for her, so for sure, she will be all right without her mother's money. That is not all. Tariq can further break Norma and Obi apart by telling her how he helped his family and how he gave Braden that information about that night at the warehouse. So if Tariq ever finds himself scared of Obi at any point, he can use these informations to make Norma get rid of Obi herself for him. Now, Efe and Kane can't be anything strong for Norma when it comes to trust since Tariq can destroy these three again. For Efe, she texted Tariq to watch his back. This information alone will make Kane really mad at Ife and Tariq can make Norma know that Kane and Ife are sleeping with each other hands. They've been playing here all this while. So if you ask me, Tariq is holding more stronger cards to play in this game. But then, Tariq might be the strong card holder here, but it will take one little mistake for him to go down as well, which I'll be talking about concerning the shooting scene involving Junior. Before then, let me tell you something about Efe. I'll tell you about why Efe did what she did by sending Tariq that notice. It is not betrayal to Kane, but rather conflict of emotions. I know you were equally shocked as to why Efe even did that in the first place after all that happened. And I don't think Efe also did that because she still has feelings for Tariq. And don't be confused. Efe isn't playing Kane and Tariq at the same time, no. She knows very well that Tariq would never have anything romantic to do with her, not even business. There is no way Tariq will end up trusting Efe again because 
Her last betrayer almost killed him had he not been braiding. Now, why is Efe helping Tariq and Kane at the same time? Personally, I think Efe is helping Tariq and Kane because when she was arrested for Lawrence attempted murder case, Kane was the one who got her that burner in the prison. Tariq was the one who worked things out by convincing Lauren not to testify against Ify in front of the jury. And this got her out without any charges. She could have gone in for life if not for Tariq. So Ify feels indebted to both Tariq and King. Her decision can also be tied to the last betrayer at the warehouse. So in all this, she feels like if she saves Tariq's life for once like he did for her in prison, maybe they can have some truth. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Do you want to see any form of truce between Tariq and Ife? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, let's talk about the shooting incident. You all remember the Louise recording when Tommy was telling him he and Ghost killed Lobos? Same recording that cycled back to Eliza Marie? Now, let's have that in mind and digest Junior's death scene. Now, Tariq only took the drive on Junior and there wasn't any thorough search on him if he is potentially wearing a wire or had a small button recording device on him. Now, what if Junior was carrying a recorder so he can get Tariq confess on tape and the thing went left? Now, remember, Junior is a very smart agent who could go as far as portray himself as a homeless guy just to get information. And for sure, that guy took his auntie's treat, dangerous with a calm face. Now, this could be the biggest mistake Terry might have done in the process of taking out Agent Young. Secondly, I feel Terry giving a report on what happened during the shootout will rather expose him more. Question someone like Blanca can ask is, why is every shooting incident that has to do with an agent or someone working with the law dying has one particular name always in the mix? A St. Patrick. One can say Junior indeed took over the stubborn gene from Angela. Angela went off the books to do a lot of investigations even when she was asked not to. All were part of the reasons she was killed. This is the same thing Junior has done and he's gone. He should have just listened to Paz or Blanca and leave this case alone. I feel for Paz in this because the same family took her sister and her son in the same line of work and she's the only one who can have a strong conviction that Tariq has something to do with her son's death. Worst part I see for Tariq is he is a witness again in this with a fingerprint intentionally made on the suspect's gun. Now, if proper body examination is conducted on Junior, something like an autopsy, Tariq might need to answer some questions. Now, let's digest the scene properly. Junior shot the guy who was after Tariq and Braden because of Norman's 100k bounty. For the purposes of this video, let's call this guy Dwayne. Now, Junior shot Dwayne. Braden hit Junior from behind and he fell on the ground, which means that there is an impact on Junior's body. Now, Junior was found dead with a bullet on his head from the side with a bullet from Dwayne's gun. Now, there is going to be two different theories here with regards to what happened at the scene. The first theory is Tariq's theory and the second one is what the first will analyze, especially Don Carter. So, let's talk about Tariq's theory. Tariq's theory is that Dwayne hit Junior from behind and shot him in the head. Tariq then took Junior's gun and shoots Dwayne in the head as well. Now, the first theory is going to be that Junior approached Tariq concerning a crime. Tariq realized Junior knew too much with an evidence. Their conversation didn't come to a reasonable conclusion and Junior being an agent probably threatened Tariq with the evidence and was turning away from him. Then Tariq, knowing the seriousness of what Junior knows, he hit Junior from the back and shot him in the head. Tariq not trusting Dwayne who was there and saw everything and heard what Junior said, Tariq decided not to leave any loose ends. So what did he do? He shot Dwayne in the head using Junior's gun to make it look as though Dwayne shot Junior and Tariq shot Dwayne with Junior's gun. Now, this is what the feds or Don Carter is potentially going to ride on to disturb Tariq. Also, looking at the proximity of Dwayne's body and that of Junior on the floor, it is almost impossible for a third person to quickly bend down to pick Junior's gun and shoot Dwayne from the kind of distance Junior did himself without Dwayne noticing first. But let me know what you also think in the comments section below. Do you think Tariq and Braden executed this unaware interruption by Junior very well? Or you think Tariq and Braden left clues that could lead back to them. For me, the proximity of Junior's body and Dwayne's body on the floor 
can likely invalidate Tariq's narrative or statements to the Fed. And we all know in power, a major death like this, which involves an agent, will not be treated lightly, especially starting from episode 1. And Junior's death became the introduction of Don Carter at the end, to which past has briefed him already. Knowing that Carter's wife was murdered and Paz also convinced that her son was murdered too, I can see Don Carter channeling his wife's energy into this case so he can have a little closure. So trust me, it's going to be a long season with Junior's case in perspective. But overall, this is a beautiful way to start the last season. Let me know how you feel about the first episode. Is it worth the wait? For me, it is a great start with a whole lot of plot and twist. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new. Like, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.